Okay, so here we have the setup for the rates of chemical reactions lab. So I already have all of my solutions already mixed um, so that they're ready to go undergo the reaction. So you can see that I have a list of, I have all of the chemicals sitting out here. I just measured those out. Uh, I did that in graduated cylinders. I also have all of the aliquots um, in these little uh, test tubes here. So they're ready to go when we see that color change. So I'm going to start with solution one uh, and then time starts when I pour solution one, when I pour the beaker into solution one. Um, so what we're gonna do is set this up on a hot plate. We are not using this, um, the, we're not using the heating function. We just wanna stir the solution while it is reacting. Um, so remember that you are only looking at the effects of concentration on the rates of reaction in this lab. Um, so I'm gonna start my time when I dump this beaker into this flask and then um, when I see the color change I'm going to add in one test tube so um, then we're going to see that color go back to the way it was we'll see another color change we'll put in the next test tube and we're going to note the cumulative time each time you add another aliquot or add another one of these test tubes to the solution we want to make sure that we're looking for the same color change each time so wait until you see the same color before adding your aliquot so i'm going to move this set up a little bit over here um, so that we can start with solution one again we're just using the stirring function on our hot plate we don't want the stirring so much that it's going to like um, start splashing out of our um, glass here but we do want that to be stirring watch that here and then just to make sure that we get a good color change when that happens I'm going to add a little extra starch to our solution okay so I have my stopwatch ready I'm going to start the time when I pour in um, the first beaker and then each time I um, add another aliquot I'm also going to write down that time so you are going to be interested in the cumulative time uh, in seconds so that you can make your plots so that you can figure out how to find the rate of each of these reactions. So we're looking for this color change each time. So I'm gonna note the time that I put in my uh, first aliquot. So it should turn back clear. And then we'll wait for the next color change and then I'll add our next um, test tube here. Okay, now that we've added our seven aliquots and have the times for each of those color changes, we're going to um, continue on to solution two. So it's the same process. When I add the test, when I add the uh, beaker to this uh, flask, then I will start my time. And then each time I see that color change, I'll add one more of these test tubes to it. So we're done with solution one. I'm gonna put that in a waste container. Uh, and then I'm gonna make sure that I clean my glassware. I'm gonna pick up solution two. To solution two, I have already added that starch. Um, so it's good to go when I pour in my beaker. Okay, so when I pour in this beaker, time is going to start.
Okay, so that was aliquot seven of solution two. So we're going to move on to solution three. Okay, when I pour the beaker in, time is going to start. Okay, that was the last aliquot for the solution three. So I've seen all those color changes. Um, so now the next thing in the procedure would be to clean up your solution. So make sure that you dump everything out into the waste container um, so that you're, and you're not dumping it down the sink. Uh, and then make sure that you wash everything. So all these little test tubes, the flasks, the beakers, anything that you use, um, you would always wanna make sure to wash that before you put it away. Um, so the next part of this lab would be to do the data analysis. You are going to plot the moles consumed versus the time. So you should have that information recorded on your report sheet um, from watching this video. And then once you have that plotted, you want to fit the lot fit that plot to with a line of best fit. Um, the slope of your line would be moles divided by seconds, um, but a rate of reaction is going to be the molarity per second. Um, so to go from moles per second to molarity per second, you wanna take that slope and divide by the total volume that was in each of our flasks. So again, that total volume was 0 0.1 liters. So remember that moles divided by liters is molarity. Um, so then your rate would have units of molarity per second. And then from those molarities, you can figure out the rate of your reaction with respect to each of your reactants. Um, so that is the data analysis and the questions part of your lab.